welcome to another episode of Midmo Mama. My name is Jenny and I live in Sedalia, Missouri where I am making in the Midwest. I am recording this video on Wednesday, April 1st for upload on Thursday, April 2nd. This program is about yarn and yarn crafts and food and whatever else I want to talk about. Um, on today's episode, <clears throat> I have lots of show and tell. I have a winner for the giveaway. And I made some very interesting buttermilk cookies. So let's get started. So we've made it to the Mama's Show and Tell segment of my program and I'm going to show you some things that I've gotten recently that I wanted to share with you. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about was the sweater I am wearing. Um, this, was, this is the first and so far it's the only sweater I have knitted. Um, I've mentioned before I have a crochet sweater um, but this is my only knit one. Um, I loved it. Um, I wear it frequently. This pattern is Drambuie by Thea Coleman. And I used the yarn that was suggested in the pattern. It was from the fiber company. Uh, the name of the yarn is Canopy Worsted. And the colorway is Parakeet. Now, unfortunately, um, the... The fiber company has discontinued this yarn. Seems like that's my luck lately. Every time I use a yarn, they discontinue it. Not that company, but it just seems like in general, companies dis discontinue their yarn as soon as I use it. But that's okay. Um, but it's one of my favorite sweaters. Um, it's got the ribbing detail across the bodice. And it's got a cabling detail down my uh, left hand side. And I think it's beautiful. It's got a uh, ribbing around the hip. And, um, and it's got ribbing detail around the sleeves. And I really enjoy wearing it. I think it's a flattering color. And um, that's, that's what I wanted to share with you. Um, in addition, I have bought... Five more skeins of the I Love This Chunky from Hobby Lobby to complete the project that I've been talking about the past couple of episodes. Um, I have all the yarn I need now to complete that project. Um, and as it turns out, I looked last time <clears throat> at my um, yarn dye lots. All my dye lots are matching now. Um, I looked at the color um, and I was worried that because I had to buy it three separate times that I would end up with different dye lots, but that's not true. Um, my dye lot numbers are matching, so I don't have to worry about blending my yarns. So I'm very pleased about that. Um, I was running out of hand cream, and so I was, um, I had some yarn sample, or some lotion samples from an Etsy store. The Etsy store is called um, Happy Hands Store. And so um, I had gone online on the Etsy site to see if I could find them. And sure enough, I was able to find the Happy Hands. Um, the owner is um, based out of um, Sandia Park, New Mexico. Um, I lived in New Mexico for a short time, for about four years. Um, but um, this is what her product looks like. Um, I'll throw the, the website up on the screen. Um, this particular fragrance is white tea and ginger. And it's, it's, a per, fairly, it's not thick, but it's, you know, it's fairly decent um, consistency. But during uh, the transition period between spring and or winter and spring, and then again between fall and winter, my hands 
get really chapped along the knuckles. And this was one of the very few hand creams that didn't aggravate those hairline cracks that we get in our knuckles during uh, season transitions. And so I like the way it feels. It's not greasy and it's not um, sticky. And it doesn't hurt my knuckles when I apply it. So I got the white tea and ginger in a two ounce size. I also got the Shetland. It's a buttermilk and honey. I got Meadow, Spring Tulips, Desert Honey, and her autumn fragrances are both on sale. She has Pumpkin Spice and Autumn Leaves. They were out of the two ounce bottles. They have four and eight ounce bottles left. So I got a four ounce bottle of autumn leaves, but they also have pumpkin spice and those are 15% off. Um, she also included a, another sample that was called Sunny Tea and it smelled lovely. It was citrus, a citrus and tea fragrance. Um, so I highly recommend their lotions just because they don't, they don't burn those little hairline um, cuts that develop when your skin gets dry. Um, another thing I wanted to highlight in my show and tell is um, the sign that I got behind me. Um, I had a sign made for my program, Midmo Mama Making in the Midwest, established in 2020. Um, so the uh, vendor I used, um, I was inspired by Bag of Day Crochet. Um, she recently got a sign for her podcast, and I thought, oh, what a neat idea. And I knew I had this vacant space right here. I didn't know what to put there um, until I saw her show, and she got her sign. And I'm like, oh, that's wonderful. Um, but I wanted to look for, to see if I could find a um, sign maker in Missouri. And sure enough, I found um, this company. It's called... MV Woodworks. MV stands for Merrimack Valley. They're in a town called Steelville, Missouri. It's um, it's about southeast of where I live. Um, I've been down there a couple of times for um, um, float trips on the river. They have a very calm river down there that has zero rapids in it, and that's that's my kind of floating. So. Um, so I've been down there before, so I'm a little bit familiar with Steelville. Um, but they had my sign made for me. It's carved out of one plank of wood. They have a variety of different finishes and designs that you can choose from. So if you need a sign and you want to support a um, maker of handmade items, then I would recommend that you go to MV Wood Woodworks on Etsy and see if they can make a sign just the way you like it. Um, in addition to that, I caved to my goal. I was I was planning to be a non-yarn buyer unless I had a specific purpose for it. But I I caved. Um, I, I lasted till March. I lasted till March, so that's something. But um, um, on St. Patrick's Day, there was a yarn company that was offering six skeins of yarn of the same type for one low price. I thought it was a good price, so let me show you what I got. I went to um, Bartlett Yarns, and uh, the name of the yarn I got is called Glen Tweed Bulky. And I got the colorway bronze. It is a yellowish brown. It's beautiful. Um, I had originally gone with um, a colorway called Scotia. It was a, 
a medium dark blue um, and I placed my order but the shop called me a couple of days later and said you know we're sorry but um, we don't have enough Scotia to fill the order and so I said well that's okay because you know why I said I was comparing two colors this one in Scotia and I said let me go with the other one I said do you have bronze available in in six games and he went and looked and came back on the phone he said absolutely I have I have six games I can give you of this so I said okay just give me bronze so my bronze arrived this is Bartlett yarns from Harmony Maine it's 100 percent wool yarn four ounces grown processed and spun in the USA um, on the back of the tag it's got BartlettYarns.com for their website content 100% wool spun from select soft fleeces with natural oils for dry cozy warmth sourced from farmers in the USA care instructions care for it as you would any fine woolen garment hand wash flat dry and this is bulky 80 yards 4 ounces and the colorway is bronze I got six of these it smells like fresh wool I love it I could stick my face in there and hold it there for days but I have six skeins and that is perfect for probably a cardigan that's what I'm hoping for or perhaps a pullover sweater um, and it is a bulky it's it's actually I would say it's a bulky number six but it's lovely the other yarn I got and I wasn't gonna buy any more but what happened was is my husband had a birthday and there happened to be a yarn dyer on Instagram who was advertising her own birthday and they're 10 years apart my husband turned 50 and um, so she was offering her yarns for 20% off and I had a hard time saying no I shouldn't have even clicked the website but it was her birthday and I wanted to celebrate her birthday because it was the same as my husband's birthday so what I ended up with I shopped at Pandia's Jewels where every skein of yarn is a jewel of its own isn't that lovely and um so I got her snug base that's her um, fingering weight um, merino nylon this colorway is called I find it most intriguing and it's yellow and blue and some natural colors some gray dark bits and things I got two of these it was beautiful and it leaped off the page and it said springtime to me so I have two of those and then I got two of another colorway it's still snug but the colorway is called two might be as one and this one is pinks and yellows and lavenders and um, a yellowish orange color and so I got two of those she also included a little sample of whisper it's a swatch six yard swatch sample in Delight DK. Um, this is Merino Nylon as well. And she also included a holographic sticker of her. I guess that's her um, design. And it's lovely. So, so there's that. That's all the yarn I bought. So I got a total of six, ten skeins of yarn. I'm getting out of hand I'll start over I can always start over um, and not buy so I'm gonna start over and then um, finally April is head and neck cancer awareness month and so I wanted to um, get something um, uh, with my 
cancer colors because that's the cancer I had. My, my tongue cancer is um, categorized as head and neck cancer. Um, and my cancer colors are burgundy and cream or ivory. Burgundy and ivory. Um, so I already had a ribbon necklace that I wear. Uh, I don't wear it all the time, but it is April, and so I will wear this all month long. But I also got um, an item from Loops of Life Etsy store, and she makes um, um, awareness jewelry of all kinds. So it's, um, a lot of it is cancer related, but she also does Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and other diseases. Um, so check out her website to see if there's a color that you're, um, or a condition that you're, um, that's close to your heart and see if they, she has something for you. But I got this beautiful, um, beaded bracelet. It has red and white faceted beads with rhinestone rondelles um, separating the beads. And then it's got a, um, uh, a cancer ribbon, red and white, to represent the head and neck cancer. And it's just a stretchy, you know, it, it fits just right. And so, in order for me to spread awareness for head and neck cancer, I'm going to wear my bracelet and my necklace. I also ordered a t-shirt from another vendor that um, is on the way, but it's delayed due to uh, coronavirus. So, I will should be able to show that to you in the next episode, um, you know, un unless the delay is significant. And then, obviously, you won't get to see it, but I'm hoping to be able to wear it. Um, in April um, but of course with a t-shirt you can just wear it anytime so we'll see if I get that but um, I do want to raise awareness now if you end up and you have a canker sore this is what I thought I had um, but usually canker sores are at the on the tip of your tongue or along you know along the front of your tongue I had a canker sore or what I called a canker sore on the back of my tongue back near my molars and um, it kind of sat there for a while because I would I would go to the doctor but I would forget to bring it up because you know I usually did the doctor for other things and it didn't occur to me to bring it up until um, in 2018 um, my tongue was swelling and I had my GP look at it because it, at then at that point it was starting to affect my eating so she said, yeah, look, I see some thickening there. And she poked at it with a tongue depressor and stuff. She said, I'm going to um, set you up with um, an ENT and have him look at it. Well, um, the guy that was at the clinic, um, he didn't really want to mess with me. Uh, he took one look at it. And the first thing out of his mouth, I wasn't even asking if it was cancer. His first thing he said was, well, it doesn't look like cancer to me. I think you've been biting on your tongue in your sleep. So he had me try a bite guard in my sleep, which didn't work. But he said, come back and see me in a month. So I went back to see him in a month. And then it turned out, um, you know, he asked me how I was feeling. I said, well, I don't feel like it's gotten any better. And so he said, well, let me take a look. So we took a look, he says, well, it looks like it's getting better to me. I think we'll close our, um, close out our case. And I said, okay. Well, the next thing you know, he had, he had left the clinic. I'd gotten a letter a month later saying that he had moved on someplace else. So it turned out he just didn't want to deal with me. He wanted to make sure all his accounts were closed before he moved on to where he was. So... Then I ended up with some different health issues, so I had to address those. It became more pressing. And then, um, and then finally, um, in December of 18, I had noted that the ENT office had a new physician. So I got on the phone and I made another appointment with him. 
for the 28th of December 2018 and so I went in and the first thing he said when he looked at me he said we're going to get a biopsy on that today he said come back to see me next week so I had made an appointment for January 4th 2019 and he said he said yes your biopsy came back positive for squamous cell carcinoma and he said I highly recommend that you get a second opinion so I had a CT scan done and uh, he had offered either I go to MU or KU uh, University of Missouri or University of Kansas well I went to University of Missouri and Dr. Dooley um, confirmed that I had squamous cell carcinoma and she set me up that same day for surgery within two weeks because I went to see her on the 16th of January and she scheduled my surgery for the 4th of February. So I barely had time to let it even sink in before we were taking care of it. Um, which is good because you don't want to dwell on those things, especially when it comes to surgery of the mouth. I didn't want, I'm glad I didn't have to spend too much time thinking about the long term impacts because I know that it was very important to have that tumor removed. So I had surgery, I had a nine hour surgery on um, February 4th. Um, they took out a third of my tongue and not just the side but down in. They removed the tumor. They had to break my mandible um, and remove a tooth. They took out a tonsil on that side. And then they took out 30 lymph nodes out of my neck. Um, um, so, um, of course, there was the tumor. They got the tumor and they got a portion, you know, they got the, my tongue that was surrounding the tumor. They got... Um, of the 30 lymph nodes that they took out, one lymph node was cancerous. Um, but they said that the cancer cells were very aggressive in there. And um, the cancer cells were breaking through the capsule. Um, so I found that to be a little bit concerning. Because um, that meant that the cancer cells were getting out. But we don't know where they went. We don't know where they were. Um, but they weren't in any of the other lymph nodes. So, um, you know, uh, because it was aggressive, um, she prescribed that I go through chemo and radiation um, to, to make sure it was gone. Um, so, uh, so I went through the chemo and the radiation um, and I still suffer effects from the radiation. My throat is scratchy a lot. I sound like I have a cold all the time, um, but it's not that. It's because my vocal cords were damaged by the radiation. Because uh, the radiation was um, um, centralized from below my nose to the very top of my clavicle. So um, from here to here. And so the radiation burned all my neck and um, uh, I lost my sal salivary gland. Um, I produce a little bit of saliva, but like when I'm eating, I don't have, I don't have, it doesn't have staying power. So the longer I eat, the more my saliva becomes diminished and so I struggle with that. I always have to have a beverage. Um, to help push food down and then of course the taste buds I lost the taste buds during uh, radiation I, I would say they're almost completely back they're not fully back but I do have a sense of taste so I find that very comforting um, and then saliva um, especially when I lay down I lose it all um, when I go to sleep I, have, I wake up several times in the middle of the night to sip water um, because everything in there just completely dries out. Um, and because of that, um, I do experience um, a case of thrush every now and then, which is, it's a, it's a fungus that develops in your mouth. 
um, and it's um, the medication makes it go away but I still struggle with that from time to time but for the most part um, I have my life I have relatively decent health and um, you know I'll take a little bit of scarring uh, for the peace of mind know, of knowing that I'm alive and yeah I'll I think I feel like I'm always gonna live with the worry that it could potentially come back because we don't know where those cells went but we're hoping for the best and so um so that's my public service announcement for head and neck cancer so let's move on to the next segment I am very happy to announce that I have a winner for the giveaway that I have um, had on my episode for the past two episodes. Um, so my um, my prize winner will receive um, a couple different surprises. The one is she will receive a 10 inch toe to toe sock tool that measures your sock. She will receive this from Marissa Bell at A Needle Runs Through It. It's an Etsy store. So she'll get one of these. And she will also receive a yarn from Nerd Girl Yarns. This is the Parlay Base. And the colorway is called Carnival of Time. This is a worsted weight. It is a um, 60% merino, 40% bamboo, 270 yards, 100 grams. Okay, and then she's going to receive a, 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 a selection of rainbow colored locking stitch markers. Um, the prize is the $42 value. So, um, so I am very happy to announce that Melissa Long, you are the winner of my giveaway. You must contact me via email at midmomama2 at gmail.com and let me know what your shipping address is. And I will give your shipping information to Marisabelle at A Needle Runs Through It. She will send you the 10-inch toe-to-toe sock tool. And I will send you the skein of yarn. Now you have, you might have to be patient in the event that we have a hard time getting to the post office. But please rest assured that you will receive your prize if you get in touch with me. Now you have until, you have 30 days to reach out to me to claim your prize. So if I do not hear from you by um, May 1st, um, uh, well, I have to put the, the prize back up for, for a drawing. But um, you have plenty of time to reach out to me. So go ahead and reach out to me as soon as you can. We'll get your prize out in the mail. So congratulations. Um, thank you very much for participating. And she helped me um, learn the difference between green and orange for uh, St. Patrick's Day. She said green represents uh, the Catholic Irish. And she said the orange represents um, the Protestant Irish. So thank you very much for sharing that with me, Melissa. And um, she also told me that she cro crochets socks for her, her and her family. So I just know that that knitting tool will come in handy for you. And I do appreciate you for the participating. So let's move on to the next segment. So now it's time for the Mama Crafts portion of our episode today. I didn't finish any projects this time, so I don't have anything finished. But I do have a couple of projects that I'm still working on. Um, in my Art by Anna Blind Mice Cheese Bag, I still have my um, uh, Two at Once Toe Up Magic Loop Socks by the Knit Picks Design Team. 
Um, I've made a little bit more progress. My knitting group is not meeting in person. Um, for the past two Mondays, we have um, been using uh, Facebook live chat, um, video chat, and uh, we've been really enjoying being able to interact and get together with each other um, via um, video uh, conferencing. So that's been great. Um, but I have um, been working on these on Mondays. And I, you know, we, we get together for about three hours. But as I've mentioned before, I'm a very slow knitter. Um, but I'm about um, two and a quarter inches in now. Um, and I'm working on the foot. The toe increases are o over with. I am using um, Knitter's Pride Zing needles. They are um, US 1.5. Um, but they're two and a half millimeter needles, um, and I'm I'm enjoying it now. Now that I'm going, uh, now that I'm not increasing anymore, I'm enjoying them a lot more. And of course, I'm using the Yarn B Walk Away Sock Yarn in the color Waltz. So there's that still going on, and then I've made. Quite a bit of progress in my cozy night throw. It's um, I'm using I love this chunky yarn in Plumberry, and I'm using a USL eight millimeter crochet hook. But this is my blanket. I don't I don't know that it will show up very well. Um, my yarn is falling apart here. Um, but my lighting is not too great today. But it is, it is big. I finished the 24th round. Um, the last time we were together, I had just, I was working on round 10. Um, so there's that. Um, so I have a stitch marker that shows where I was the last time I have to push it through. So this is where I was, this the round. And so I've made some significant progress, I would say, from that point. Um, this is a very heavy blanket. It is very, very soft. Very, very soft. And I'm enjoying the rounds and um, I'm making very good progress. I, it's, it's quite likely I could be done by, with it by next time. So, um, so there's the blanket. It looks awfully dark in the picture, but it's it's more of a, a reddish purple, and, and it's more purple than red. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely a plum color. Uh, I took a picture of it on Instagram, and it turned up more of a, a burgundy, but it's definitely not red. It's not burgundy at all. It's definitely purple. It's hard to show purple. Um, so, but those are the only two things I'm working on right now. I'll get into my hibernating projects before too long. I'm ready to get working on some stuff um, that I've had sitting for a little bit. So, stay tuned for future episodes to find out what I'm working on there. But now I want to go over some of the pattern highlights um, of Ravelry. Uh, there are several patterns that I thought were beautiful, but I'm only going to showcase five. I'm tempted to showcase more, but, you know, I can't show you everything. You have to go look around for yourself. And uh, so the first pattern I would like to highlight, they're in alphabetical order, is the Cascades Tea um, by Emily Kintai, K-I-N-T-I-G-H. Um, it's published on the Knit Picks website. And also in a book called Equinox, a modern cotton collection. Um, it's a knitting knitted top, short sleeve. Uh, it was published last month in March. Uh, they suggest that you use Knit Picks Cotton, um, which is a cotton linen blend in a DK weight. Uh, they use US 7. 4.5 millimeter needles and uh, you 
You're going to use at least 615 yards, but you can use all the way up to 1476 yards. It's available in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sizes, um, as low as 32 and a half inch bust, all the way up to a 60 and a half inch bust. Uh, the pattern is in English. It costs $4.99 at the nitpicks.com website. It is not a Ravelry download. This gorgeous tee features a lovely lace pattern that resembles mountains, starting at the neckline and continuing over the shoulders and along the top of the back. It has simple eyelet borders at the bottom hems and around the sleeves. This beautiful and versatile tee can easily be worn with skirts or jeans. The tee is worked flat from the bottom front hem to the back hem with stitches placed on scrap yarn to be picked up for the neckline. The sides are then seamed and stitches are picked up to work the eyelet borders on the sleeves and the pearl neckline in the round. Lace pattern is only charted. So, um, so I guess it's a written pattern until you get to the lace portion and then you have to follow the chart for that. So, very lovely. I highly recommend it. It's a beautiful top. Perfect for summer. The second pattern that I would like to highlight is called Cracks Gradient Shawl by Sylvia Kaczynska. Kaczynska. Um, the Cracks is spelled C-R-A-X and the designer's name is Sylvia S-Y-L-W-I-A and the last name is K-A-W-C-Z-Y-N-S-K-A. Um, it's published in My Crochetery website. Um, it's crochet. It's a shawl. It was published last month in March. They suggest that you use Sheep Just Whirl and Sheep Just Whirlet. Um, both of those yarns were used in the pattern. It's a fingering weight yarn. Um, it recommends hook sizes 3.5 millimeter or USE. It's in uh, US crochet terminology and it's in English. Uh, the pattern's available for 250 euro, which equates to $2.87 US. You can download the pattern for free at her website or you can buy it as a Ravelry download. The Cracks Gradient Shawl will allow you to create a large crochet shawl with fascinating mosaic crochet design using your favorite gradient yarn. Cracks Gradient Shawl is a generously sized shawl worked sideways on the bias from one tip to the opposite edge. The combination of asymmetric triangle shaping and mosaic color work using a gradient yarn makes this pattern a great project for those of you looking to expand your crochet skills. Although the pattern is written in one size, it could easily be made larger or smaller, um, adding or omitting pattern repeats. The shifting colors keep the work interesting. Team up your favorite gradient yarn or long self-driping yarn with a contrasting solid to create this intriguing Cracks Gradient Shawl. It includes step-by-step -step mosaic crochet tutorial. So, very lovely. I highly recommend you consider that for a project. I've been choosing mosaics a lot. I didn't realize you could do mosaic crochet in addition to mosaic knitting. So, um, mosaic, what a great, what a great technique. The next pattern I would like to highlight is the Hawthorne Beaded Wrap by Crochet Hooks and Magic. Um, it's published in Crochet Hooks and Magic's Ravelry Store. Um, and of course it's crochet. It's a wrap or shawl. It was published last, last month in March. 
Um, they suggest that you use DK yarn. Um, the pattern designer used King Cole price-wise DK. Uh, the hook size is three and a half millimeter or US size E. And it's available in one size. It's uh, written in UK crochet terminology and it languages in English. It's available for 250 Great Britain price. Um, which equates to $3.24 U.S. Inspired by the whimsical hawthorn leaf, many believe it is bad luck to cut a hawthorn tree down. These trees were said to be under the protection of fairies, and if the fairy tree was killed, the fairy might seek revenge. Keep your fairies happy with this hawthorn beaded wrap. Also useful for keeping warm on those cool chilly days. The pattern repeat color changes are worked using the tapestry crochet technique and all rows are worked from the right side only. The ends of each row are left long to form the finishing tassels. Although I would, I would say that's more of a fringe than a tassel, but it's a lovely design and I think you should take a look at it. The fourth pattern I would like to highlight is the Samilla Cardigan by Mon Petit Violon. That's a French phrase and I don't know how to pronounce it so please forgive my um, inability to pronounce it correctly. Um, but the but the designer is Mon Petit Villon, V-I-O-L-O-N. Um, it is available on Ravelry as a download. It's crochet. It's a it's a child it's an infant child size cardigan. I loved it. I saw it on Instagram the other day, and I'm like, oh, I need to find it. And it just happened to show up in my pattern highlights, so I wanted to show it to you. Um, it was published last month. They suggest you use a sport weight yarn, a 3.5 millimeter hook, an E. So the, the, the three crochet patterns I have highlighted all recommend you use an E hook. Um, it's available in one, two, three, four, five, six sizes, starting from six to nine months, all the way up to a nine, ten youth size. It's in U.S. crochet terminology, and the pattern is in English. Um, this pattern is available for $4.99 U.S. Um, you can buy it on Ravelry, or you can go to the website. It's The language is in English only. Samilla Cardigan is worked top-down. The pattern of the lower part is fun to make and it creates a wonderful texture. For this cardigan, I suggest you use sport weight or five ply yarn. It will create a very flowy and soft fabric. But you can also use DK weight if it's a very light DK weight yarn and it's closer to a sport weight. So it's very lovely. The skill level is easy, easy to intermediate. Uh, I think it's beautiful. I, I thought it was lovely. I knew it was a child sweater, but boy, sometimes I see a child sweater and I wish they made them in grown-up sizes because they're beautiful, but that's okay. Uh, if I have a child in my life that needs one of those sweaters, someday I'll have grandchildren. Um, I'll make one for my grandbaby. And if you have a grandbaby or a child to make this for, I highly recommend you give it a try because it's beautiful. Finally, I would like to highlight a pattern called Thistledown by Stella Aykroyd. Um, it's a knitting pattern. It's a shawl wrap. It was published last month. Um, she used Erica Knight wool, but uh, she recommends a light fingering 100% wool um, yarn. She used a needle size six U.S. size six four millimeter. Uh, it's a uh, 
the, the painter is written in two sizes um, and it's in English it's a Ravelry download that cost three twenty nine in Great Britain price um, or four dollars and twenty six cents US this pretty shawl is a practical year-round design offered in two sizes the larger has a deeper border whilst retaining the simple elegance of the stocking stitch center wear it as a shawl or bundled up as a scarf this is a relaxing project to make while which is sure to become a go-to wardrobe staple and i love this item it's very beautiful i love the edging on it and i love i actually love the plain stockinette stitch um i would make it in a color though other than gray it's modeled in gray and i know they use gray because it makes it easy to to see the stitch definition and such like that but i'm I'm not a great person. I would do a different color, but I it's beautifully, beautifully worked, and I highly recommend that one. So that concludes my um, that concludes my five notable patterns on Ravelry. So let's move on to the next segment. So now it's time for the Mama Bakes segment of our program. Today I am showing you how I made buttermilk cookies. It's another recipe out of um, this fundraiser cookbook. It's called um, 354th MXS Recipes from Those Who Served. It was a fundraiser cookbook that I did uh, that that we did when we were when we were active duty. Um, when you're in the military and you want to have a um, a Christmas party or a squadron picnic, it's against the law to use taxpayer money to do that. So we do fundraisers in order to raise money for our Christmas parties and our um, uh, squadron picnics and stuff. So that's how that's funded. So we're pretty much funding it ourselves because we only buy, you know, we, we buy from our own fundraisers. But that's how we raise money for social events and stuff. Anyway, I'm not active duty anymore, so I don't know why I was using present tense. But, um, but the people who made this recipe or contributed this recipe clearly did not try the recipe out because they were talking about how you have to form them into balls and bake them in balls. But the batter was far too thin to be a cookie at all. Um... It was it was more like a waffle batter, and I think that they would have made better waffles out of a waffle iron. So I am going to recommend that. Um, I've had to rewrite these recipes in my uh, show notes because um, the past couple of them, there were the ingredients were listed in the most used to the least used, not in the order that you used them. So I had to rewrite the recipes in order to show that you know, the order that you use the ingredients in. Well, this one, because I tried, tried it out, I had to rewrite how, how you know, how to put them in the pan and how to bake them. So, um, so you're not going to be able to roll these into balls. You, you scoop it and you put the dollops on your pan and you bake them. And they came out more of a cake. Like I said, it was it, it would made, would have made a much better waffle than a cookie, um, or you could make them as cookies and put like a filling between them and make little sandwich cookies out of them, like a whoopie pie. Um, uh, I think that would be good. But um, you know, I'm gonna quit jabbering away and I'm gonna show you how to make buttermilk cookies. Due to technical difficulties, I could not um, include my video segment of the buttermilk cookies. So instead, I'm going to have to read the recipe to you. You can follow the recipe um, in my show notes at my website. All you got to do is go to my channel and click the link 
to my website on Wix. But here's the recipe for buttermilk cookies. The ingredients you're going to need is one cup of shortening, two cups of sugar, four eggs, two cups of water, a half cup of butter, uh, powdered buttermilk, three teaspoons baking powder, one teaspoon baking soda, one teaspoon nutmeg, one teaspoon vanilla, five cups of flour. Preheat your oven to 425 degrees. Cream the shortening and sugar together. Add eggs and beat well. Mix in water and the buttermilk powder. Add the next four ingredients and mix well. Stir in the flour and mix until combined. The batter we will be about like waffle or pancake batter with a small scoop or soup spoon place dollops on a greased cookie sheet about two inches apart bake for eight minutes and the recipe makes about seven dozen give it a try once again I would recommend that you try waffles <laughs> but if, if you're interested in trying it out I would I'd recommend you give it a try. It's kind of fun. And that's how you make the cookies. So now it's time for the Mama Reads segment of the episode. Um, I haven't finished any books. I'm still working on the same ones that I talked about last time. I'm still reading... Um, Biscuits, Butter, and Blessings, Farm Fresh Devotions for Hope and Comfort by Linda Kozar. I'm really enjoying it. Um, and I just do one every time I go down to um, work on my crafts. So that's fun. Um, we're still working on Open Your Bible. God's Word is for you and for now by Rachel Myers and Amanda Bible Williams. We're almost done with this one, so by the next time we um, get together, um, I'll have another one to show you, but we're wrapping this one up. We're still meeting in person. There's only five of us, and we're just doing um, whatever we feel comfortable with. Um, we'll continue for as long as we remain healthy. But if something should change or we don't feel comfortable meeting, um, of course we'll go on hiatus for that period of time. But uh, um, right now we haven't um, we haven't made any decisions to stop at this point. So do we have that? I'm still reading the Rainbow on my Kindle by uh, D. H. Lawrence. And I'm working through it. I'm getting through it little by little. I, I, I read it for about 15 minutes before I go to bed. Uh, I'm not making as fast a progress as I ought to, but, you know, I don't care. I'm enjoying it now. It's it's better than it was. I just it hit a rough patch um, a while back, but it's it's redeeming itself. It's not too bad. And finally, I'm still reading The Scarlet Thread by Francine Rivers. Um, it's, it has improved since the last episode. I, I had just started it that morning, uh, or that day, the last time I recorded an episode. And this time around, I think it's much, uh, it's much improved. Um, both the husband and the wife... Um, were are at fault for the marital difficulties they're having, um, but I haven't reached the end of it yet, and um, it's been a really good realistic um, episode or book this time. So um, I'm enjoying that. So now it's time to move on to the next segment.
So now it's time to talk about the movies that Mama's been watching. Um, I watched two Marvel superhero movies, and I watched two um, gambling movies, and I watched a standalone movie. So uh, the two Marvel films that I watched was uh, Captain America, the first Avenger, from 2011. It features Chris Evans, Hugo Weaving, and Samuel L. Jackson. I thought it was pretty good. Um, I um, I like the the setting. I like anything that takes place during World War II, and so I like the setting of that film. Um, and the other one that we watched was Doctor Strange from 2016. It featured Benedict Cumberbatch and Rachel McAdams. And there was an actor in there that I don't know how to pronounce his real name. And I apologize. But it's it's spelled, his first name is spelled C-H-I-W-E-T-E-L. And his last name is spelled E-J-I-O-F. O R. I haven't heard the name pronounced out loud, so I don't know how to say it. Um, but he's also in the film. Um, this one was actually the best one I've seen so far. I really liked um, the story. Uh, it had a Save the World um, segment in it, which I really liked. And... Um, in general, I just thought it was, it was so far it has been the best one that I've seen. So, um, good job. Good job for Marvel. I'm glad they made one that I finally liked. I would watch it again. I, would, I don't want to watch it again. I wouldn't say, oh, let me go watch it again. I wouldn't be like that, but, um, you know, if it was on and Scott was watching it, I'd sit and watch it with him. Um, and then the gambling movies, uh, the first one I watched was A Big Hand for the Little Lady. It was from 1966. It featured Henry Fonda and um, Joanne Woodward and Jason Robards. Um, and I, it's, I love gambling movies. I really enjoy them. I, I don't gamble myself. I'm not someone who will play poker or anything like that. I know how to play, and I have. I've done poker nights and stuff, but, um, but I, I enjoy, I enjoy that movie. It's got a surprise ending to it. It's not like your typical gambling movie, um, that we see, uh, and I, I like the surprise ending. It works out really good. I like it. And then the other one was The Cincinnati Kid with Steve McQueen, Anne Margaret, Carl Malden, and Edward G. Robinson. And uh, that's one that I grew up watching with my dad whenever it would come on. Um, we have a family quote that we have taken from that movie. And every time we all have a steak, have a steak for dinner, <laughs> my dad, he'll, he'll poke the guy next to him, whoever was sitting next to him at the time, he'll go, how you like that steak, kid? And that came from that movie. So I watched it all the time. Um, Rip Torn was the actor that had that line. But uh, I enjoy watching that. It's suspenseful. And then at the very end, you don't know who's going to win. Who's going to win? We don't know who's going to win. But everybody's rooting for the young guy, the Cincinnati kid, because... Um, the, the older fella, played by Edward G. Robinson, he's he's the one that wins all the time, and so they all want an underdog to win, and they all say that he's the best. But it was it was a good movie. I enjoyed it. And then the standalone movie that I watched was a um, suspense thriller. It wasn't a horror movie. I I won't watch it if it's horror, but I don't mind being a little bit edge on my seat. And this was called A Quiet Place. It was from 2018. It featured Emily Blunt, 
John Krasinski and Millicent Simmons. And it's about these monsters, these blind monsters that have taken over the world. And they can't see, but they have a very acute sense of hearing. And so, um, and as soon as they hear something, they come running out of the woods and they gobble them up. They gobble them up for food, and it's terrible, very terrible. But this family is a family of five, and the the oldest daughter is deaf, so. Sometimes she makes sounds, but she doesn't know she's making sound because she can't hear. And then the mom is pregnant, and she has to have a baby in complete silence, which, you know, Hollywood does what it does. But I don't think I don't think anyone could have a baby and not make a sound. But you know, it was it was suspenseful. It had some jumpy moments in it, and. Um, and I thought it was pretty entertaining. So that was that was the movies that I've watched um, in the past couple of weeks. So let's move on to the next segment. So now we've made it to Miscellaneous Mama. And today I'm going to talk about my husband's birthday. On March 24th, my husband turned 50. And... So we had a family celebration. I was planning for a big, happy 50th birthday party at church. But we had to cancel it because, because the virus has taken over the world and we can't get together with people. Um, my husband is the men's ministry leader at church. And so I was... You know, he was planning for his um, get-together, and I was going to hijack his men's ministry to celebrate his birthday. And it was going to be a, somewhat of a surprise. It wasn't going to be a full-blown surprise where you're hiding in the dark and everybody leaps out and says, surprise. It wasn't going to be like that, but we were just going to, I was just going to take over men's ministry and when he showed up he'd see all these people there and we'd all wish him a happy birthday and we were going to have some supper and we are going to have some cupcakes and but it didn't work out so I ended up buying I went to the butcher there's a there's an actual butcher shop in uh, Warrensburg and I got some steaks there. I was looking for a filet mignon because my husband likes lean meat. He doesn't like fat on his meat. So I was going to go with a filet mignon. But they were sold out of filet. So the next leaner cut of steak is the sirloin. So they had sirloin. So I got a sirloin steak for him. And I got ribeye for Audrey and I because we like fat on our steak. And I marinated the steaks, and we grilled them on the grill, and we had baked potato and salad and green beans and rolls. And so that was delicious. We had a nice meal, and we watched Dr. Strange uh, for his birthday. And so it was low-key. And my husband likes martial arts. He's... Um, he just started. It's something that he's wanted to do all his life. And uh, uh, finally he got himself enrolled in a martial arts class. And he got himself a bow. Sh I got him. I got it for him. He didn't buy it. He picked it out. He put it on his wish list what he wanted. And I just went around looking for it. So I got him a bow staff. And I got him a a pedestal bun punching bag. He's already got a heavyweight that heavyweight bag that hangs from the ceiling. But he now I got him this um, pedestal bag that's got a rounded thing, and you can punch it. So he would punch the heavy bag twice and punch the pedestal bag. So punch, 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 punch. Or he can kick it with his foot if he wants to. So um, he was really pleased with his gifts and uh, watched the movie and 
and that's the way we celebrated his 50th birthday. And it's kind of sad because it was just me and Scott and Audrey for that. And it was kind of sad. But a birthday is a birthday and we were thankful that he turned 50. So there was that. I wanted to talk a little bit about why I decided to start a YouTube channel. Well, I've been wanting to start one for a very long time, but I've been very bashful about it. Um, something happened to me after I got cancer and I decided I wasn't going to be afraid to try stuff. Uh, so I've been trying all kinds of stuff um, in the past year since I've been since I had cancer. I just I just made up my mind. I'm, I'm going to try things. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to be bashful. I'm going to do what I want to do, and I'm not going to worry about it if people judge me. I don't, I don't care about judgment from other people. <laughs> so if you want to think I'm an idiot, okay. You think I'm an idiot. You, you, you're welcome to do that and I don't care. I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> and so what? So what? Who cares? You know, if, if people don't like what I do, I don't care. I don't care if you don't like what I do. I'm going to enjoy what I do. So um, I was worried about my voice. You know, because I, I have a hard time enunciating some words, and I have a scratchy voice. And my daughter, Audrey, she started a YouTube channel called Audrey, Audrey Grace. And she does cleaning, cleaning motivation, and decorating, um, but it's mostly cleaning, cleaning motivation uh, programs on YouTube and she's just getting started and so I was like I love that you're doing this and she said well why don't you do it and I said well because nobody would understand me and she said that's ridiculous she said there's so many people on YouTube who have disabilities and they have followings they have an audience and that's no excuse for not having a channel she said everybody should have a channel I said okay <laughs> So I thought about it and I thought about what I wanted to do and I've been wanting to do this blog style um, crafting program for a long time and so I decided to just throw caution to the wind and I'm going to do what I want to do and screw everybody who doesn't like what I do. <laughs> I don't care. So that's what I'm doing. Um, so. I'm not going to let my limitations keep me from doing what I want to do. And um, so here I am. I'm trying my hand at the at the YouTube thing. And I'm enjoying it. I'm having a good time. And I'll continue to do it so long as I'm having fun. And when it's no longer fun, that's when I'm going to say, I've had it. I'm not doing it anymore. But I haven't reached that point yet. I'm still having a good time. And I'm still trying to perfect my video directing. Um, this time I'm using a, an actual video camera. For the past two episodes I used an iPhone but I have a hard time downloading my videos off of my phone. My videos go up to the iCloud and then I have to download them from the iCloud onto my PC because I cannot transfer those videos from my phone to the PC directly. I'm an idiot. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to do it. It won't download off of my phone. So, and then downloading it off of the cloud takes ages. It takes forever. And so I struggle with that too. So I thought, well, I'll use the video camera because then I can transfer from the little disc to the computer and it's a whole lot faster. But the video quality is not as good. So you have to make your trade-offs. And I think I would rather save time and have a, a slightly less, a slightly poor quality of video in order to save time. But we'll see. I'll, I'll mess around with it, mess around with it, and I'll eventually find 
the message that works best for me. So who has influenced me? In my, I would kind of talk about the, the podcast that I watch, but it'll be a long segment, and I don't want it to be that much longer. Um, so I'm just going to talk about my influences as far as um, how I put my show together and how I've developed it. So um, my primary influence has been uh, Geeky Girls Knit and cross stitch podcast now they used to be exclusively knitting so it was geek, geek sorry my throat geeky girls knit was all it was called but they've recently added cross stitch because cc um has been turned on to cross stitch and so in turn her daughter has become interested so and it seems like theirs has become more about cross-stitch than it is about knitting. So they've kind of gone a different direction. But I've watched them for years and I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm ready to let go. Because it's not about what I want it to be about. Which is fine, but um, I feel a sense of loyalty to them. So I don't want to give up on them. So... Um, but uh, the thing that, that I picked up from their program was because um, I liked how their show is broken down into defined segments. And whenever I say, and now it's time to move on to the next segment, I stole that from Cece. I, I couldn't help it. That's, that's the best way I have discovered to transition from one segment to the next. I don't know what else to say and it says everything I want. So when I say it's time to move on to the next segment, that's when I know to cut my film and move on to the next thing. So the Geeky Girls Knit have, has influenced me a great deal in my having a YouTube channel. Um, let's see, my fast motion food segments with the voiceovers and music, uh, I was influenced by Audrey's videos. She watches what she affectionately refers to as her mom programs, and um, she calls them her mom, her mom videos. And these are stay-at-home moms that do motivational cleaning, organizing, and decoration videos. And so th that was her influence, and so she makes those videos, but they, they're done in fast motion. And I thought that would be a fun way to make my food segments to be a little bit more um, interactive and a little bit more entertaining. Uh, so I do them in fast motion, and then I explain what I'm doing with some music in the background. And I think that I, I like the way it comes out. So that's that's where I got that from. Um, <clears throat> the name of my program, Midmo Mama, as you know, happened quite by accident. Um, I was um, just just a very few days before I started my program I saw in my um, on YouTube you get those recommended for you videos and there was one called the quiet corner podcast and um, <laughs> it was Great. It was a brand new episode. I watched her episode. She's It's a knitting and spinning podcast. But I loved her program. And I was going to call mine um, Jenny's Quiet Place. And she called hers The Quiet Corner. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I can't call mine Jenny's Quiet Place when another YouTube came out called The Quiet Corner. I didn't want it to look like I was copying off of her um, or confusing. I didn't want somebody to confuse hers with mine. Um, 
So I didn't, I didn't think it would be a very cool thing if I went with Ginny's Quiet Place. So I had to decide what I wanted to name my program and I was sitting around with my husband and my daughter and I came up with Midmo Mid Mama. I thought it was easier for me to say with my mouth because I was having a hard time with quiet. Gin I have a hard time even pronouncing my name. Jenny's Quiet Place. It was too difficult for me to say. But Midmo Mama comes out real smooth. And the other part that I have struggled with is when I say making. Making in the Midwest. So, so that's how Midmo Mama came about. And I, I feel like the name suits me a little bit better than the, uh, better than having Jenny's Quiet Place. So I, I like that. And, and so that, so the Quiet Corner influenced me to change my name from Jenny's Quiet Place to Midmo Mama. So thank you. I appreciate you having your, your YouTube come out so that I could make sure I had the right name for my program. Um, the Cozy Cottage Crochet podcast was also a big influence in me putting my program together. Um, I just liked her theme music. She's from Florida and she uses theme music that is um, in keeping with the theme of her program. Um, it's, she's got a coastal theme, uh, a big a beach environment, not peaches, <laughs> beaches. See, I have a hard time. Sometimes this thing all swells up and I have a hard time enunciating. But I wanted to make sure I had music that was indicative of uh, my Midwestern location. And so I, I fell in love with that tap dancing theme song. I think it's, I think, I think it's, it suits me very well. I really like it. And, uh, and so that's what I use for my theme. And I use different music for my cooking segments. Um, but I'll always have that one theme music for my program. I like it. I think it says who I am. It's good music. And it's all about me. And then finally, another uh, podcast that influenced me to start was The Naughty Nitwits. Um, I had found them actually by accident. I was watching another podcast and um, their program came on right afterwards. And I was in the middle of a row so I didn't want to stop what I was doing so I just let it play. And by the time I got to my row, I wanted to keep watching because I enjoyed the way they interact. I like their program. And so um, I like I like that they're humorous. I like um, that they are casual and relaxed without being sloppy. And um, I just enjoy seeing what they're working on and hearing what they're talking about. And, and stuff like that. So I watch I watch them pretty regularly. But I think next time I'll tell you about some of the other podcasts that I watch. But those were the ones that were the main influences for me. And uh, I'll highlight some others in the next episode. But this one's been going on for quite long enough. So it's time for me to move on to the next segment. And now it's time for the portion of the episode where I wrap things up. I want to thank you for spending time with me today. I know that watching my program is a choice and so I'm grateful that you have um, chosen to spend this time with me. If you enjoyed what you saw, I would encourage you to click the subscribe button. All it does is make it easier for you to find me the next time you watch YouTube. You can click the bell notifications if you want to, but I don't see that that's necessary. Just just subscribe and you'll, you'll get notified 
um, of my of my uh, most Anyway, just subscribe is good enough. You don't have to click the bell notification unless you want to. It's completely your option. Um, I post my episodes on the first and third Thursday of every month. So be watching for that. And um, let's see. If you want to ask me any questions, you can ask your question in the comments below. Or you can send me an email at midmomama2 at gmail.com you, uh, you can find me on Instagram at midmomama1 midmomama1 or you can find me on Ravelry as Jenny for Reels so until next time may God bless you and you have a great day bye